My name is Justin. At Jigsaw, where I work, we ask the question, how can technology make people in the world safer? Many of you today here spend your lives fighting oppressive regimes, and your work inspires us. So today, we're going to talk a bit about your digital security, how your adversaries try to get access to your sensitive information, like your emails, and how you can make their jobs a little bit harder. Along the way, we'll talk about some specific pieces of digital security advice. Really, we'll just be scratching the surface. My real hope is that you take away a new way to think about the big picture of your digital security. Now, the challenges are more common than many of us may think about. Let me give you an example. A few years ago, we met the technical lead of a small nonprofit in the Middle East, a very innocuous group. She told us that she was worried about her digital security. We asked why. She said sometimes she logs into her social media accounts and her messages are already marked as red. Not great. Sometimes her webcam light turns on for no obvious reason. Not great. <laughs> sometimes her colleague receives emails from her that she hasn't sent. Definitely not great. And occasionally she herself received anonymous emails containing screenshots of her own desktop. Any one of those four things on their own would have been grounds for concern. Add up all four, and frankly, we were flabbergasted. But the reality is that these kind of attacks are common. If I ask you here today to take a moment and reflect on whether you or anyone that you work with or know well has experienced any of those sorts of attacks, please, if you're comfortable, raise your hand now and show each other that you're not alone. Quite a number. What I've found when thinking about these kind of attacks is that there are things you can do to make an attacker's job harder. And it often starts by understanding the attacker's perspective. So today, we're going to go inside the mind of a digital attacker. Now, for the purposes of today, let's say that the attacker is named Justin. Not me, though. <laughs> My evil twin. <laughs> he sits in an office building far from here, works for a government, and has been told to get into your emails. Now, emails are a very typical target for a digital attacker. They often contain sensitive information. Maybe it's incriminating, maybe it's embarrassing, maybe it's about you, maybe it's about those that you work with. But for the purposes of today, we're gonna say that the email is the goal, which again is a very typical goal. As for the target, it's you, right here today. Whether you're a journalist, whether you train nonprofit leaders from around the world, you are Justin's target. Now, as he wakes up in the morning and thinks about how he's going to get to your emails, he has three basic options, just three. The cloud, the connection, and the device. The bad news is that you're only as strong as your weakest link. If my evil twin can get into just one of these three, he can get access to the information he wants. But the good news is that if all three of these are secure, it's going to be very hard for my evil twin to get your emails. He begins with the device. By device, I mean your phone, your tablet, your laptop, your desktop, whatever you use to get access to the internet. In practice, the device is often the weakest link. So it's realistic that my evil twin would begin here. He crafts an email. Maybe you've seen an email that looks like this. It claims it's from your email provider, and it wants you to click a link and type your password. If you do that, if you type your password, you are giving my evil twin your password, and he's gonna log into your account and do whatever he likes. But maybe you notice this looks suspicious. I remember a bit back, I was speaking with some politicians, and I asked them if they had ever received attacks like this. And they said, oh yes, we all have, very recently in fact, but we all knew they were fake. I said, oh, how did you know? They said, well, the emails were in a different language than the language our accounts are set to. It's a pretty good tip off. Maybe something here tips you off. Or maybe you do click that link, you type in your password, but you're using something called a security key, which functions as a sort of second layer of security on your account, a second password. It's a physical device, goes in your USB drive, and if you're using one of those, even if you typed your password in, you still would not be giving my evil twin access to your account. So one way or another, this attack fails. Well, my evil twin is not gonna give up that easily. He's gonna try again. This time, though, he doesn't want your password. He wants you to open an attachment. 
If you open that attachment, and if your system is not totally up to date, there might be a well-known virus in that attachment that lets my evil twin do all sorts of stuff. Turn on your microphone, turn on your camera, take screenshots, see every document on your device, see every key you type as you type it. If there's anything sensitive that you're doing or anyone that you know is doing, my evil twin will have that information. But maybe you're too clever. Maybe you don't open that attachment. Or maybe you open it in the cloud rather than on your device so that it can't infect your device. Or maybe you're fully up to date and the virus doesn't work. One way or another, you dodge this attack too. Now, I would be remiss here if I didn't mention something called a zero-day exploit. These are much rarer, they're harder for an attacker to use, but they take advantage of secret bugs that no one knows about. So even if your system is up to date, you still might be vulnerable to a zero-day exploit. However, as I mentioned, these are going to require budget. My evil twin might have to go to his boss and say, I really want to use a zero-day here. Do I have permission? More often than not, he probably won't get it. So there are people here today who need to worry about zero-day exploits. But for most of us, this is not part of the things that we need to be worried about on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, I'm really just scratching the surface here. But I do think that on a device level, there are these basic things you can do that make my evil twin's job harder. You can use a security key as a second password. You can open attachments in the cloud. And you can keep your software fully up to date. And more often than not, if you do those things, it won't be worth my evil twin's time to go deeper. And so he may abandon his attack on your device. Well, now he turns to the cloud. Remember, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Even though he couldn't get into your device, he can get the same data from your cloud, perhaps. Now, when I say cloud, imagine this some data center somewhere. Let's say it's in the same country as my evil twin. Perhaps he gets his boss to send a subpoena to the cloud company. The company sends your email right back on a silver platter. And the next day, it runs in the state-run newspaper. It's not so good. Well, maybe you tried to put your cloud in your closet, a private cloud that you directly manage. The challenge with this approach is that it's very hard to keep a private cloud fully up to date. There might be some vulnerability in it. And finally, he turns to the connection, by which I mean your connection to the internet. Now remember, you are here in New York City. My evil twin is a long ways off. In general, when your evil twin or your adversary, whoever they are, if they're not in the same place as you, it's going to be challenging for them to get at your connection. In practice, this is probably your lowest area of concern. Of course, if you were in the same country, there are things that you could do. For example, you could use HTTPS rather than HTTP to help secure your connection. But for the sake of today, and again, we're just scratching the surface, this is not part of the threat. So my evil twin tried to go after your device, couldn't succeed. Tried to go after the cloud, failed again. Tried to go after the connection, barely even got off the ground. My evil twin is batting 0 for 3. And he has to decide, is he going to try to spend money, try to get a, a permission to use things like zero-day exploits, or is he going to move on to his next target? In practice, in many cases, if you've done the things I mentioned, your security may be above the bar. Three words I've not said today are PGP, Tor, and stickers. These are all digital security tools that many security trainers recommend, and they all provide real value. PGP is a way to secure your emails in your cloud and on the connection. Tor provides anonymity on your device. And those little stickers you put over your webcam help ensure the privacy of your webcam. But when we think about security from the point of view of the connection, the device, the cloud, we recognize that none of these are enough on their own. I, I worked, for example, with a European nonprofit that used all three of these very diligently, but every email they sent, every key they typed, was still read by an adversary. My guess is that probably a vulnerability on the device was the Achilles heel, and that link was weak enough that an adversary could get in that way. So in conclusion, when you think about digital security, whether you're thinking about your own tools and practices, whether you're thinking about the new threat you've read about in a newspaper article, think about it through this lens and ask yourself which link is being targeted and will improving the security of that link improve your overall security? Thank you for your time, and thank you for everything that you do.